Okie dokie, my friends. Now that summer is almost officially here, let's talk about what to do when it's 102. Hi, friends. It is, I think, about time for me to discuss a topic that many of us are starting to ask ourselves, and that is how the heck am I going to stay comfortable now that it's getting hot out? Now, I know that there are some areas still where people are battling with cold temps, especially at night, and are wanting to know how to stay warm. <laughs> but if you're in the Southeast, especially, we have been in triple digits almost this week. Um, actually, we did hit 100 this week here where I'm camping. And that's what I want to talk to you about is I firmly believe that you can camp all year long, even in hot, humid, unfriendly climates. Now, I do want to put the disclaimer on that I fully realize it's different if you are in a full-time situation in Florida where my home base is or one of the other Southeast states. Um, I mean, when you just day after day after day cannot really get a break from that incessant heat and humidity, I am sure it's completely different than if you're just doing a few days or even a week or two at a time, knowing that you have a home base with a climate controlled environment that you can go back to. So I am not by any means speaking for everyone, but I do have some universal tips that I think will make it much, much more comfortable and possible to continue camping even when it's over a hundred in your vehicle like it was for me this week. And I'm gonna tell you how right now. So the very first thing that people tell you to do pretty much, and it's not bad advice, is move with the weather. Meaning as it heats up, you go to higher elevations, typically move north if you're south. Um, if you're in the valley, you go up into the mountains more and so on. And if you are a full-time nomad that's not tied to a specific area for whatever reason, that probably is the best option. Um, and that's because we can't control the weather. We can't make it better. Um, we can really only prepare ourselves to adapt to it as best as possible in any given circumstance. So for me, in Florida and the Southeast, that means doing what I can do to minimize my discomfort, to minimize the effects of the heat and humidity, and to try and do what I can to be as comfortable as possible. Number one is try, if at all possible, to stay out of your vehicle during the hottest parts of the day. Get out, do, um, preferably air-conditioned activities, go for a walks in shaded areas if possible, um, Panera Bread, Starbucks, um, do your errands during the day if possible so that you can be inside of air-conditioned spaces. If that's not possible or if you don't want to do errands all day, try to find a shady spot to park in. <clears throat> if you're at camp, try to, um, if you have a shady spot or if you have like a pop-up tent or shelter, um, those are ideal. I keep looking at mine right now. <laughs> Sorry. Those are ideal um, for staying cooler because you can get that cross breeze. You're out of the sun. You're not in an enclosed space that's heating up like an oven, basically. Um, <clears throat> with that same um, token in mind uh, when we're talking about shade, use your window covered. And when I'm saying use your window covers, I don't just mean when you're parked, trying to be stealthy, trying to, um, you know, not be seen. I mean, use your window covers. If you are parked at a trailhead and you're going to be away from your car for a few hours, put your window covers on. Ever since I started doing that, I have noticed a huge difference. Is it still hot when I get back to Tara? Yes, it's still warm, but it is noticeably cooler inside 
and when I turn my car on, it takes seconds to cool off to a comfortable temperature. Whereas before, it would be like five, ten minutes down the road. I'm still baking and sweating, waiting for the AC to feel good. So use your window covers and have good window covers if possible. Um, I still swear by my screens and my magnetic curtains up front for those two windows. But ever since I got my weather text and I have been using the um, insulated reflectic um, on the outside with that thicker, um, well-made insulated material. I use it in the front, the back, all of my windows except the front too, and it makes such a big difference. Um, already just the last couple of days that it's been 100, I've noticed such a difference from this time last year when I did not have the weather techs. Um, they really do help keep it a little bit more comfortable. Now they're not magic. You're not going to be, you know, loving life in here and just cool as a cucumber. <laughs> I was hot yesterday. I did not want to be in here until after dark. I had my doors open. I had the back open. I um, was, like I said, sitting outside for most of the time until it started to cool down a little bit. So um, I just want to reiterate, you're not going to be cool or cold. This is just to keep you comfortable. Keep that in mind with these next tips. Okay, now I mentioned my window screens briefly, and I am going to insert a clip here in a second of them um, just as a refresher, although I did do a whole video on window coverings, so definitely hop over there and check that out after this one. I think there's a lot of really useful information in that one. But screens in the southeast are a must. They allow for airflow and ventilation, but more importantly, they keep bugs and anything else that you don't want in your vehicle out. So you can get that breeze without, you know, <laughs> it getting so stifling, but you don't have to worry about all the noceums and the mosquitoes getting into. I could not live without my screens in Florida. And they can go over the rain guards too. The next item that is non-negotiable aside from screens, fans. You cannot camp, sleep, live in your vehicle in Florida, the southeast, anywhere hot without fans. Ideally, more than one and ideally more powerful um, if you can handle it. I love these USB ones. Um, they also have a little light, which is nice. I've featured these before in my lighting video. Um, they do have three settings on the fan. Now they do die quickly, so make sure that you have um, either those little battery banks or a power source that you can recharge as needed but I have two of these that I use. And since they are smaller, you have to have them pretty close to you for them to make a big difference. But when I'm sleeping, I will generally keep one near my head and one near my feet just to have that airflow right on me. Now, an upgrade this year. As I showed on my one of my haul videos, is this um, is it Kunti Kuni Kuni fan? It's um, similar to the Opolar fan. I'm going to turn it off for a second so it's not loud. Eight inch blades, four settings. This is powerful. Now I have been getting away with only using it on the lowest setting until this week. Once it got into the mid 90s, I did have to go to the mid setting. And for a little bit yesterday evening, I even went up to the high setting. Now on low, it'll last 24 hours before you have to charge it. Um, medium, it's 12 hours. So just keep that in mind if you are not somewhere with shore power or with um, reliable power source to recharge it, because if you're somewhere for a few days, you don't want it to die the first day and then be out of luck. 
but this is oh my gosh i'm so glad i got this best purchase so far definitely invest in a good fan and when i say invest this one i got on sale for 30 but don't skimp out when it comes to having a good quality a powerful fan. It makes all the difference. TLC Smokey, he is such an attention hog. Been sitting back there this whole time. <sighs> Anyways, my next tip, which is also new to me this year and game changer. I think I've probably said that already, but I'm telling you these tips work. Um, now, I'll mention what to do if you don't have a fridge, but first, if you have a fridge like me, bring a couple ice packs with you. Um, my son's medication comes with these every couple of weeks, so I have like a stockpile of them. So I always bring a few in my fridge and switch them out. Oh, so nice when it's hot. You want to put it on your chest, the back of your neck feels so good yesterday please don't mind all my bumps and bruises i'm such a klutzy camper um last night i spent hours at camp just sitting in my camp chair in my clam just with an ice pack either on my chest or the back of my neck against my chair and it felt so good with the breeze um, and then once it's not cold anymore, I just pop it back in the fridge. Like I said, I keep a couple. So if you're really hot after a hike, you can just kind of rotate them out. Um, if you have a cooler and you start to get melted ice, I would recommend maybe using that before you switch it out. Or if you have those hot water bottles um, that you use in the winter, Put ice water in there, put ice in there, and you can use that the same way. Um, I don't have ice with me now that I have the fridge, but oh, lifesaver, love these. You can also put them under your armpit, anywhere that's gonna cool down your core fast and just kind of give you that little refresh and reset and just kind of like extra pep again <laughs> when you're feeling oh, like just the sun is just melting you. So this highly useful tip, definitely, definitely recommend. And then you do want to um, make sure you're being cognizant of moisture though and condensation. You don't want to put this in bed with you. You don't want to like put it on your pillow and then sleep on it because you don't want to do anything to introduce moisture to your bedding or to bring mold in. So, um, you know, outside to cool off or like I'm doing here where I'm just sitting in here and then when I'm done with it, I'll put it back in the fridge or off on a dry um, surface for a little while. Definitely not in my bedding at all. So just wanted to mention that, but highly recommend. And speaking of moisture, you are going to want to have something like this, whether it's those little dehumidifying bags, whether it's damp rid, although I personally don't like having like a, just a bucket of chemicals, just like kind of in such a confined space. So I opted for this. Um, I've heard other people say that they only have to recharge it every few weeks. Let me tell you, after four or five days, it's starting to turn to this green color instead of the orange in Florida. And, um, and in South Carolina where I am now. So it definitely soaks up the moisture and it does take a while to recharge. I wanna say like eight hours, something like that. I mean, it gets hot while it's recharging, but it just heats it back up and then turns orange again. So, you know, it's good to go. Um, I am gonna do a more detailed video where I test exactly how long in the summer it goes before it goes from orange to green with continuous use and how often you have to charge it. Um, if it makes it, I think I might add a second one um, to keep up front. So if I do, I'll um, report back whether it makes a difference having two. But so far I'm really happy with this. I know it's working because like I said, it turns green and I have to recharge it. So highly recommend that. The last item that I added in and definitely would recommend 
have recommended and will link below along with the other items. And that is cooling blanket. Now, I do not know the magic sticks, <laughs> magic sticks. I was trying to be clever. I don't know the logistics or the science behind this. I mean, I'm sure I could do a Google search and read up why it works, but the type of material it is and this double layer fabric, it's a really lightweight blanket. So it's, and it's really soft, so it's comfortable against your skin, but um, it's designed to kind of draw the heat and the moisture away from you. Whereas most blankets kind of do the opposite, kind of insulate, this kind of pulls the heat off your body. So it keeps you cooler and from getting that kind of like sweaty, oh, I gotta get this blanket off of me quick kind of feeling, at least that I get. Um, the way I kind of describe it is, you know that cold pillow uh, phenomenon, like where when you first put your head on the pillow, it feels so nice and cold, but it only lasts for like a few seconds and then you flip over the pillow to find another cold spot and so on and so on. Just me, anyways. It's kind of like that. So it kind of feels like that cool pillow on your skin. And it doesn't like where you put it on, you instantly start to get hot. Um, you stay nice and dry and comfortable. Now it is a blanket. It's not like it's gonna refrigerate you or anything, but I can tell you that this to me, light years more comfortable and effective than like when I had just a sheet on me or even not being covered, I really felt like I was less sweaty um, and more comfortable throughout the night. In fact, I didn't wake up at all the last few nights. And like I said, it's been like 90s when I go to bed and it's, you know, still hot in the car. So when I wake up, it's comfortable, but I've been able to fall asleep and stay asleep doing these few tips. And that's pretty much it, folks. Um, like I said, there's no magic bullet. There's no secret that's gonna, you know, keep you cool and shivering when it's 100 degrees outside, unless you, of course, have an air conditioner in your vehicle, um, aside from the one that you need to run your vehicle for, um, or if you have something like a Prius where a push comes to shove, you need to run um, the climate control option you know, where it kicks on your engine every so often. Obviously, I'm not an expert by that explanation, but you get the drift. There's no magic here to stay cold. So where you're going to be like, oh man, this is just like camping in the winter. Having gone through the winter season now after my first summer, I can tell you, oh, it was so pleasurable having those cold months to camp in Florida probably why Florida is so popular during those months for camping. But um, the point I'm trying to make is you can only do so much to make yourself comfortable. I feel like my system has done that and will enable me to camp all year long. I did camp all last summer, although I did struggle a few days. And I can already tell a difference with these few new additions that I've added on for this summer. So I really do think I'll be even more comfortable this summer. Um, basically, just to recap, stay out of the heat during the hottest part of the day. Stay out of your vehicle during the hottest part of the day if you can. Shade, shade, shade. Um, park in the shade. Create your own shade use window covers to get shade inside your vehicle to help with the temperature control. All key things. Um, hydrate. I did not mention that. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. You need more water than you think you need. Do not cut off liquids because you don't want to have to deal with peeing. That's not an option if you're in 100 degree weather. You need to drink your water. Okay, so shade, hydrate fans, screens, cooling blanket, ice packs. I really think with those things, and multiple fans, not just one little dinky fan, multiple fans, a heavy duty one if you can, if you can swing it. Um, I love mine that I can clamp anywhere. I've already sung its praises. I'm going to shut up about it further, but those are the keys. That's it. Super simple, 
but essential if you want to camp when it's hot out. And I don't know about you, but I want to keep camping. So thank you for watching like always. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I am getting so close to a thousand subscribers. I already have my 4,000 watched hours. I would really love your support if you're not already subscribed and you do find this kind of content helpful. Also, I would love to have you along with me on my future adventures. And if you haven't seen my past adventures, you can always check those out. Um, look at my playlists, look through my catalog. I have been to lots of cool places and I'm going to lots more. So I will see you on the next one. Stay cool, stay comfortable, and keep camping.